your environment informs your postural patterns. That like these chairs put us into a certain position. These lights, you know, photobiomodulation, like they affect our nervous system. So the light choice that you have in your house will actually affect your autonomic state. So if you have really bright, gnarly, like Walmart freaking lights, <laughs> yeah, you know, in, in, in your house, and they're, they're they've got this alternating current happening, it's like this strobe light, a blue light, just blasting your eyes before you go to bed. That informs the way that you produce yourself. Like that is movement, you know, and and compared to maybe if you put yourself into like your place here where you have a panoramic view and you could see out into the canyon. That puts your autonomic nervous system into a place like what does it do to you? It makes you feel safe. It makes you feel like you can look out over, you know, the, the world. You're kind of like on top and you're you're looking through. You have this like this like panoramic expansive view of of potentiality mm. compared to if you were in the bottom and you were looking up, what is that doing to you at like a like a, at a deep carnal level? You're looking up, you're saying, okay, there's all these potential threats up there. I need to be kind of like ready because they're looking down at me. So if I was a little prey animal and there's all this action up above me, there's like a subtle subconscious contraction or like readiness. But if you go to the top of the hill and you look down, suddenly you go, it flips. Okay, there's nothing really above me that could attack. And I, I'm kind of looking down at all of this. So I go, oh. And then your eyes, you know, when you go into a myopic focused state, that gears your autonomic nervous system into more of that sympathetic, like get her done state. Yeah. When you go into relaxation and that panoramic view, that gears your autonomic nervous system into, oh, cool, like there's nothing to do. Mm -hmm. Like we're, we're chilling right now. So suddenly you go more parasympathetic and suddenly blood pressure kind of chills out a little bit and your respiration kind of slows down a little bit and you might get a little longer exhalation. You know, so that would be the first thing. That was a very long-winded way of saying I would start off with... Environment. Environment. Yeah. Yeah, like it, like it, you could do whatever you wanted to your body. You could have the most amazing Rolfing session or Feldenkrais session or Cairo session you know, or plug yourself up to some $50,000 biohacking gadget and do 40 years of Zen or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you come back to your like your your hobble in <laughs> Sao Paulo or whatever yeah. and it's just like noise and stuff and it's like you, you, you it's just this frenetic energy yeah. like whatever you did is not going to stick you need to change the environment to match your internal state absolutely and so you could also change your environment to match your potential internal state that you're seeking and see how that affects you. That's what you do with this place. There are things that we can do within our reality that allow us to set ourselves up for success and how we move our body, what positions we go to. Mm. And so when, when we look at the, our physiology and we look at how most people are working, which is how they spend a good majority of their life, sitting in these cubicles, you know, in these chairs that are just not designed for how a human body is meant to be at for prolonged periods of time. I know something that you really speak to is is how important walking is and hanging and sitting on the ground. And so if you could walk us through some of these key things that we can all start to implement more in our lives that will then have the cascade ripple down effect of, yeah. you know, feeling more. Yes. Yeah, so so if, if you, if you look at, at like Dan Buettner's work in the blue zones, you know, you go to different, um, you know, there's one in Italy, there's one in Southern California, there's in Japan. Um, there's, I don't remember the other ones are at, uh, but they, the, the people there, they tend to have a really great community. They drink wine and smoke cigarettes and, and you know they hang out with each other and they eat gluten bread and they do all the things we're not supposed to do. Uh, and they're outside a lot and they garden a lot uh, and they're walking up hills and down hills a lot. It's just a part of the, it's like baked into their lifestyle. You know, and so that just walking, if a person just walked more, like they are passively massaging all of their organs Every time you take a step and your guts, this whole system, this is a, a, a closed hydraulic system, right? So it's like pressure. And so every time you go, oh, oh, you're circulating that pressure, not just through, you know, like your lungs, it's the pressure through your pelvic floor and the pressure through you know, your whole entire body. You're like squeezing that toothpaste back and forth. 
And what you're doing is you're you're allowing the decongestion of all of that precious tissue in all of the the the, the organs that that animate you, and all of the connective tissue in the feet, and like like, like every your brain, your spinal cord, cerebral spinal fluid, like everything. Oh, it's it's mo- it's circulating. Like that's the way that the the body is structured in such a way. Like we evolve to heal ourselves, right? Like that's a big deal. We evolve to heal ourselves just through our existence. But if you augment the existence and you take away some of those key factors that actually are, are, are like tuning mechanisms or healing mechanisms for a physiology, such as just walking regularly, such as just being outside a lot, you know, being a, a, a domesticated animal, it doesn't do good things, right? Technically, a domesticated animal will tend to live a little bit longer. But if you could do a hybrid of a domesticated animal that also has access to nature, that's going to be the most robust organism, like by far. Mm -hmm. Like nature also is gnarly. So if you just put you and I, you're like, cool, we're going to we're going to do the align method. We're going to like live in Topanga Canyon. Like we're going to die. (laughs) It's not going to be good, right? But if you just live inside your house, you're not going to die, die. But you're going to like kind of die also. You know, you're going to like fester. Yeah. Right, so the the blend between the two actually is really powerful. Like the safety and support and anchoring of domestication, and like the nurturing and the replenishing of domestication with the wildness of nature, that blend is very important. Kind of like the same thing of like the like the Greeks compared to modern day. You know, where it's like oh, animism and circles and all of that compared to now, it's like much more right angles. Mm. Both are right. They're both valuable. It's just like masculine, feminine dynamics. So walking would be a really big one. Um, if you want to modulate your blood sugar, so a lot of people, you know, people are tripping out about blood sugar. It's like you know the present thing. Mm-hmm. So you know, fat or whatever it is. I think nutritional um, Hype. dogmas. Yeah, they kind of they they kind of move. It's kind of like a poo poo platter of like, okay, what's next? <laughs> uh, but you care about blood sugar and you care about uh, oxidative metabolism. You know, like burning fat I mean, and aerobic function and whatnot. Um, you probably heard of the the maybe maybe not. It's kind of a little obscure, but the the soleus push up thing. You just sit at your your desk and just do a little soleus pretend walk with your feet or you something. Just pretend walk with your feet. <laughs> Yeah, that'll boost your metabolism for several hours and help to to regulate your blood sugar. Like like it has a significant effect. Mm. Uh, just your little little bitch ass soleus. It's like one percent <laughs> of your whole entire body. You're just like a little pump. Just need a little pump. Yeah, <laughs> not that much. We're not asking for a lot. The body's like, bro, I'm not asking for that much. You're just not doing anything. <laughs> like nothing. <laughs> Give me a soleus pump. <laughs> simple. <laughs> not a big deal. Keep it simple. Yeah. You know, and take take you know take your shoes off. Mm-hmm. You know, there's seven thousand odd nerve endings in each of your feet. It's a lot. It wants to process it like like God or evolution or freaking Makunde or whatever you're into. Like they endowed you with all of this sensory receptive potential, and you're just squandering it probably as a modern person for the most part. Like there's something there just intuitively. It's like, why would I have all this potential? And like there are probably something I, there's some deep part inside of me that like wants to use it, you know, and, and you know, the, the modern world, it's slowly becoming more and more disembodied and disassociated from those, there's just the, 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 the 7,000 nerve endings in the feet and, you know, all of the sensory receptors through the whole system. It's just like slowly dumbing down. And all you got to do is like pop your shoes off, you know, go stand on a warm rock, you know, look up. If you're looking down with your eyes a lot, that's going to also put you in a little bit more of like a one. One, it makes you more tired, you know. So your 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 eyes are neurological tissue; they're a continuation of your brain. Mm-hmm. I would say your whole body is a continuation of your brain. Um, but the way that you use your eyes when you're looking up, it's more stimulating. It opens up to creativity, right? It's like creative thought. That's why the suggestion is if a person looks up when they respond to you, they they might be lying because they're going in their their imagination. Or as they're looking down, they're going into you know more like yeah. implicit information, things yeah. that they they already you know have stored inside there. So if you want to be a, a creator, right? You want to you want to have uh, new novel ideas. Look up, like it's, it's like 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 turn on your physiology to activate those toggles to induce creativity. Like you can actually physically induce creativity in your body by the way that you move. You know, maybe start writing in cursive, write in a journal and do this. 
that's also scientifically proven to boost a person's creativity. I'm just going like this compared to going like this, right? The, the term for it's there's a different term. The one's postural feedback. Uh, you know, there's embodied cognition, uh, but all of it's, I mean, they're kind of similar, similar. Well, theirs are slightly different, but it's the way that we move and then also the way that our environment moves us informs the way that we think and the way that we feel. Yeah.